Hey guys, this is Caspi with Tape, and today you join me for episode 19 of Road to Colonization. And we start in orbit around Duna with the little uh, kind of solar plant I'm sending to the surface of Duna. And last time we had a bunch of uh, signal, signal delay issues, and I uh, made the decision to just turn signal delay off in remote tech because while it is a cool feature, I think it just... I think it gets in the way and makes it less fun for me, really, and, uh, you know, I, I don't think it really adds anything. And especially when you don't put mech jab on a vehicle, it means that, um, like, turning and things also have uh, a signal delay, and I find that just really annoying. Like, <laughs> I'm not going for full realism. So that's off, and we're sending this down to the surface. Because, um, well, uh, the, the, the Duna base doesn't really have enough power to run all of its life support things. Um, it's carbon extractor, water filter, and farm. And I'd really like it to be able to because I want it to be a self-sustaining base, or at least mostly self-sustaining. Well, yeah, mostly self-sustaining because at some point we're going to come here and not really come back. Um, well, probably come back at some point, but yeah. Anyway, so after a bit of a, a bit of a re-entry and a landing, um, getting over to the base, we got pretty close. I did a little bit of a cut because we're going to be landing on Duna a lot in this episode and probably the next few, so you don't want to see all of it all the time. But uh, we're coming down pretty close to the base, not close enough to connect it with pipes, but we'll just hop over there. That's why this has a bunch of fuel, and also it's just nice to put a bunch of fuel near the base just in case I need it um, for anything. So yeah, after a bit of a hop, you can see we're nice and close to that pylon, um, but apparently not close enough. Oh no, I wanted, to be, wanted it to be at a slightly better angle. And we'll deploy those solar, <clears throat> those solar panels. Those will be connected up when um, some kerbals get down here to kind of connect the whole base up which would be nice. Anyway, um, we have other things to be preparing for. Uh, we would be spending pretty much the whole time on Duna this episode, but the Eve window is like 50 days away and we just need to start preparing. So I'm sending some fuel up to the Concordia, which is the spacecraft which got back from Duna and we'll be heading on to Eve for that mission. And yeah, so it needs some fuel. Most of the fuel will come from Minmus, but there's uh, the high thrust mode tanks need some oxidizer. So I thought I'd just send that up because I didn't want to have to do two fueling trips to Minmus um, for the cost of like one launch. So yeah, um, this is heading up, of course, on the Pulsar X, our single stage to orbit rocket. Pretty much the workhorse right now. It takes crew up. It takes fair. It it does. It has about a thirty ton capability, which is fine for most of our launches, but obviously there's the bigger vehicles for when we need to bring something really big up. But yes, we deploy those fairings, and you can see the little um, fueling vehicle, that is the Eris 7, our newest fueling vehicle, um, and it has a little adapter on there, because I'm going to need to also send up that adapter so that the fueling spacecraft on Minmus can dock with the Concordia, because the Concordia doesn't have any big docking ports, so there's just a little adapter there which will be left in orbit, whereas everything else will be coming back. But yes, we're almost in orbit now. Yeah, I haven't been doing many launches in uh, recent episodes because we've got so much kind of stuff in space to do. We've got Duna, we've got probes getting places, we've, we're preparing for our EVE mission obviously here. Um, and yeah, and the, the miner on Minmus does most of the uh, fueling, which was a large portion of my launches in the past, but not so much anymore. Um, also, since we've stopped exploring the moon so much, we don't need it. Anyway, we were just getting our encounter ready with uh, the Concordia. It's slightly inclined because it was coming back from Duna, of course, um, but yeah, we mat uh, meet up with it at our ascending node anyway, and here we are just moving in, getting ready to go and dock with one of the fueling docking ports which are on the back. The other ones are crew docking ports. Obviously, that doesn't make any real difference, but, uh, you know, it's fun It's fun to pretend. <laughs> so yeah, it docks on the back, and these are slightly slanted. I quite like how this looks. I like how this whole spacecraft looked, looks, actually. Shame it, um, I knocked off one of those uh, solar panels so kind of so long ago, uh, and it did its whole mission with three. It looked a little bit janky. But anyway, we're just transferring that fuel across now so that we can use that high thrust mode on the uh, vehicle, because it's really just helpful for leaving uh, Kerbin to have a high thrust mode on your vehicles. But anyway, we must start bringing this hardware back now. We've got the rocket in space, of course. going to shut down those outer engines because it doesn't need them for landing. And we're going to do our deorbit burn right there. And then we're going to re-enter, which, you know, burn up a bit, lose those little wings. That always happens. And then we're going to land fairly close to the KSC. And it looks like we're going to land fairly gently, but on just enough of a slope that it falls over. Which usually means it explodes because it's a really big rocket. But anyway, we can still recover some of those probes and the engine block, quite importantly. And yeah, 
Anyway, I still have another spacecraft, another rocket in orbit from, I think, last time when I sent up some crew. And we land this, actually very close to the KSC. This wasn't with any burns either. It just kind of naturally landed this close to the KSC, so I'm very... Very happy about that. And this one does land properly and we recover it. We also recovered the fueling spacecraft. Apparently I forgot to hit record while actually bringing it back, but there it is. So all of that is back now. And we are back at Duna with the Canterbury. And we're going to send some crew down to the base. Well, actually, first we're going to send them down to the mining base um, so that we can link up the miner and the fuel shuttle and get a little more fuel in this. And then we're going to head over, head over to the base and start setting things up. So we need to do a bit of warping so that the base and stuff is in the day. So we'll cut through that so we can just see it now. Nicely illuminated by the sun. Not quite as uh, bright as we're used to on Kerbin, but uh, not as bad as it gets on Jewel. Anyway, yeah, that will deorbit. I'm going to try and overshoot here, because usually I undershoot and that's never good. However, I think that wasn't actually quite enough, so I'll probably tweak that a bit in a little bit. And then we have to do a quick inclination change. We're, of course, landing at the Miner first, which is about 30 kilometers from the base. Because the miner needs to start, well, fueling up the shuttle, uh, the fuel shuttle. And yes, now it's just a matter of re-entering, not burning up, because of course it's Duna. Um, oh yeah, here we're just doing our little tweak so that we uh, overshoot the base a little more. Um, yeah, so now we're going to descend. We've got our parachutes all ready. I'm just preparing them so that they'll open as early as possible, because uh, Duna has a very thin atmosphere, so they tend to op open late. Um, which isn't great if you want to land quite hastily, which I often do when I overshoot. I'm like, oh, right now, and then I have to just kind of stop in the air. Um, and that's uh, not great. Uh, but anyway, yes, it looks like we are coming down pretty close. Um, just kind of hopefully... <laughs> there we go, there go the drogue chutes, and uh, those will be deploying soon. Um, I'm going to make the main chutes deploy soon now as well, so that we land close-ish to the base. We almost overshot quite a bit, but we should be landing within kind of a kilometer, which means just a small hop. And it doesn't matter if we burn too much fuel, because it's a fuel miner. We've got all the fuel we need. <laughs> um, I actually don't know if the fuel runs out on surfaces. I, it has before for me, but that was on very kind of um, sparse or areas. But anyway, here we are, just landing beautifully on uh, Duna. Just, there we go, touching down, nice and gentle, and then we'll just have to make a quick hop over there, a little over a kilometer, and let's get going. Um, so yeah, because obviously we have to connect this up with pipes, and pipes only have like a certain amount of range, not a kilometer. Maybe I should build a massive um, like relay of pipes from this to the base so I don't actually have to come and land here. Um, it'll be like the Duna Access Pipeline, except not awful. Um, yeah, and there we go, touching down again, I will need to make another smaller hop because it's not quite close enough, and there we go, landing actually close to the, uh, actually close to the fuel shuttle. I'm not going to use the miner to fuel this up, I'm just going to use the fuel shuttle so I don't have to wait for fuel to be uh, mined, and there is still enough fuel in the fuel shuttle to fuel up the little lander, so that's all good, so we'll start connecting that up with the pipe. And steal a bunch of its fuel, because that means we can move on to the base quickly and just have the uh, shuttle mined up, you know, well, fueled up by the miner. So yeah, let's transfer some of that fuel across. Now, there isn't much left, but it doesn't matter. I do love how that uh, fuel shuttle looks. It's just massive and marvellous standing there, looking, eh, it, I just think it looks great. Um, <laughs> but anyway, yes, it looks like we fueled up everything now, and we'll have all of the Delta V. We do need to move the miner now, however, so we do a quick... Little jump, um, as it wasn't quite close enough to the fuel shuttle um, once again. And there we go. Um, not Still not close enough, actually. Well, it probably is, but I want it to be a little closer. So uh, going to hop again, but this time I actually get too close. It's going to probably get its solar panel shaded for half the day. So then I hop out a little more, and I'm pretty happy with that. That Kerbal's pretty brave standing there with me flying around with these nuclear engines. Then we deploy our radiators and our solar panels, and we are ready to mine, hopefully. After we, of course, connect it up to the fuel shuttle, because we've got to put that fuel somewhere that it mines. Um, so yeah, just throw that on there, although not quite. There we go. And um, looks like they're in a fairly good position. So let's link them up now. Uh, I have to do a bit of a jump. Um, Duna's kind of sl just like, uh, just has just low enough gravity that the RCS pack works, um, which is good, but... Uh, it still makes it kind of clunky to move around. You can see me doing this here. There isn't a full ladder all the way down on the uh, lander, which isn't great. But anyway, there we go. So now we can deploy the drill and start getting ready to uh, start getting ready to mine. We'll set up the uh, liquid fuel oxidizer ISRU, and all should be good. However, I have to try and balance this um, thermal efficiency because this mine is actually kind of set up for mining in vacuum because it has 
all of the 12 radiators. But I figure out that two actually works best. Um, I'm deploying another one here. I was just kind of, this took ages to figure out the best thermal efficiency. It's not actually working at full capacity, um, but I might try and fix that later. When I took it down to no um, radiators, uh, they got too hot and wouldn't mine either. But when it's too cold, it also doesn't produce enough fuel. But anyway, that's all done now. The uh, We'll leave that to start fueling up the shuttle and head on over to the base. We get a quick report, uh, science report there, transmit it. Get a contract for about 80 grand. We get that nice bit of money, which is good because this was an expensive mission. And now we're going to head on over to the base. Just do a quick hop. However, 30 kilometers is actually kind of a big hop, really. It takes quite a lot of fuel to do this. Um, so I am going to move that mining operation a little closer to the base just because this is a little incongruous. It doesn't actually help um, that much to do this. It burns off pretty much as much fuel as I gained from the miner, which is a little bit of a shame. But anyway, it doesn't matter. This was just really a test mission anyway. Um, we've only got three Kerbals on this, by the way. I didn't really mention the crew. We've got a pilot, a um, a pilot, an engineer, and a scientist. We left a pilot, an engineer, and the tourists on the Canterbury. They might come down later, but for now, they're not going to. Uh, for some reason now, the, so the legs won't deploy, which is kind of annoying. Um, but So hopefully this will land fine on its engines, and it does, which is good, because I land fairly gently um, using the engines, and there we go. Yeah, lands pretty nicely, the nice thing about having two engines. But yeah, these won't deploy for some reason, which is kind of annoying. Um, but anyway, we get our Kerbals out, we're going to head on over to the base, although this one can't fly because he's carrying too much stuff in his Kerbal inventory. Um, so we're going to get another Kerbal out, the engineer, and he's going to head over to the base, grab the little rover so I can bring it over so I don't have to fly all of the Kerbals over, which will take an annoying amount of time, especially since one of them will have to walk. So yeah, just going to go land at the base, run to the little rover and have a little drive, which is always nice. Annoyingly, for some reason, the uh, landing legs, although they wouldn't deploy, did just explode. Um, so now that lander doesn't have landing legs, which is an issue. Um, we do have a backup lander at Duna, but it can only carry three Kerbals, and at some point I'm going to want to bring more than three Kerbals down to the base, probably. Um, but maybe I can just kind of cannibalize some other things and fix these landing legs. I'm not sure what caused that, but, uh, you know, sometimes KSB just has its janky moments. Anyway... Uh, we'll forget about that for now, since it is fine for now. I mean, it can land without landing legs. I just prefer it to land with landing legs. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, we get our Kerbals into the rover, and they're going to head on over to the base so that they can start, well, get into the base, and the engineer is going to start linking things up so that everything is connected and can start sharing fuel and power and life support. Because we've got these two new pods down there as well. We've got tons of space in this base. It's going to be great. You can just hang out, do whatever. It'll be great. Anyway... Um, I'm just going to grab these pipes now, start setting them up properly. Um, obviously, I need to go and grab that other um, pipe end from the thingy, the pod, and connect it to the main core of the base with Kerbal Attachment System. Rather beautiful. Now, even though those uh, things don't have any kind of life support on them, they can use the base's life support, which is rather nice. Um, and yes, we'll uh, connect this to the same module, the cupula. However, this cupula doesn't have a kind of IVA, so I don't really know why I used it. It does look nice, though, so... Yeah, anyway, and now we need to link up the solar farm so that we can, well, have enough power to have sustainable life support down here on the base. Um, so, yeah, we're going to throw that there now. And uh, I can't click on it because you have to be really close to link things, and I can't use my RCS pack, so I'm just going to throw the other one on this little pylon and do it from here. Uh, have to do a little bit of a jump, but all is good. Yes, Kerbal Attachment System is... Uh, another landing leg explodes on that for some reason, which is really annoying. Um, lots of exploding landing legs today. I guess Dune is very... Yeah, it seems like KSP is really great, but they never quite figured out how ground works, um, which kind of makes... I don't know. It's, it's great, but a lot of the time, the ground just breaks everything, and especially the sea. Jesus. Anyway... Uh, enough of that. We're just going to get the Kerbals into the base now so that they can start uh, kind of just chilling out, start testing this life support system. So we turn on the farm uh, right there. We're going to turn on the um, a carbon extractor and the water purifier. And that should, uh, yeah, should solve everything. However, there's a, uh, the power is fine now, finally, which is good. Um, however, there is a slight problem that I think it's using slightly too much water. So I'm going to bring down the carbon extractor a little bit and that I think that fixes everything actually. I bring down one of the extractors and basically it balances so that the life support's actually slowly increasing rather than decreasing. But anyway, yes, that's all sorted out now. Life support working. Um, there will be enough life support forever, probably not. 
Um, and now we're just going to plant a flag because we're going to get like 150 grand to do so. We're going to take it down because I already have a flag here underneath the base for some reason. It fell over. And yeah, we're going to get back into the base. And that is all from Duna today. We've uh, had a fairly successful day on Duna, but now we have to think about Eve. So we're going to get this fuel shuttle going. I'm going to get it heading up, getting it, heading it back to Kerbin, fuel up the Concordia, and then, uh, of course, the Concordia can head on to Eve once it's got all of its other things. But this is a pretty important part. Um, it has fully fueled up now, and we can start to, well, get going. So we fire up the nuclear engines and very slowly take off from the surface of Minmus. Um, because the nuclear engines don't have a ton of uh, thrust, as I've mentioned many times. It's always a little sluggish, um, but I actually quite like watching it take off very sluggishly. It's just like, ah, look at that behemoth. Um, <laughs> I think it actually is a little bit smaller than the one on Duna, um, but not by much. And obviously the one on Duna uses a skipper engine, because nuclear engines wouldn't do the job on their world so massive as Duna. But now we're just going to get into orbit and start heading back down to the orbit of the Concordia. However, that is going to be a little bit kind of cut up because um, we have a Dres encounter in like a few hours. So, uh, or maybe like a day. I can't see my post-production window so low resolution. Uh, but anyway, we're going to escape Minmus and then while this is going back to uh, Kerbin, we're going to have to go over to Dres and, uh, what, well, guide our probe into an orbit around Dres because we sent a probe to Dres a while ago and it's, uh, well, this, I think this is a second probe we sent to Dres. I think the first one failed due to um, life, uh, no, due to power concerns. So yeah, we will need to do a bit of an uh, inclination change here, obviously, to get into line with that. Um, and yeah, we'll, that'll be in a few hours. So we're gonna have to go to Dres, do a bit of stuff, then we're gonna have to come back, um, do the inclination change, and then go back to Dres. Um, so yeah, here we are just at, well, with the probe, getting getting close to Dres, starting to, starting to find its way down. I'm looking for Dres, but I can't see it because it's tiny. And, bad color and just terrible, just a terrible planet. Um, <laughs> it's just so boring, but uh, it is a planet and I do need to go to it and the last probe failed. So yeah, you can see me here just like, where the fuck is it? It's but I do eventually briefly spy it, as you can see on screen soon-ish. Um, I actually can't even see it in this window, but yeah, there it is. Anyway, we're just going to send a little bit of science back now from a high orbit, um, because we might as well, um, and I'll get a world first and things, which is a little bit of money. We don't really need science anymore, but money's always good. Um, so yeah, we'll take a bunch of reports, and we might as well get the science. I think I get money for sending science back anyway, because I set up the um, scheme to do that, which is pretty good. Uh, so yeah, um, now I'm just going to start planning my orbital, in orbital insertion burn, which... Uh, will be quite costly actually. You can see it's slightly more than I have in this transfer stage. However, I'm gonna kind of use the Oberth effect a little bit uh, to decrease that uh, by a small amount. So I'm gonna bring my periapsis down as close to Dres as I possibly can. And this is a pretty good demonstration. You can see just by doing that tiny burn, it's brought the, uh, peri the apoapsis down even more, which means my burn will be much cheaper to get into orbit of Dres. Um, so I end up deciding on, I think, five kilometers. Um, as you can see here, I'm just kind of doing that little burn so that it gets closer and that should mean that I will maybe just about have enough fuel to land because there is a lander on here and I would have enough fuel to get into orbit no matter what but I'd quite like to um, I'd quite like to also use the lander to land but anyway that'll actually be in the next episode because we're coming to the end now but uh, yeah you can see I've managed to get my um, insertion burn down to more like 1600 meters per second, which is good. And now we are just finishing off the episode with the inclination change. Yes, yeah, so we've been a bit all over the place today. We've been at Kerbin, Duna, Dres, Minmus. Um, but yeah, I, ho I hope you've enjoyed this, uh, and I hope you'll come back to the next episode where we'll be actually landing on Dres, hopefully getting the Concordia ready and maybe even leaving for Eve, and maybe a little more stuff on Duna. I also apologize if my commentary's been a bit all over the place today. It is still one million degrees in London. And I think this was like uh, 12 takes. I had to stop a lot. So I am sorry if it's a little incoherent, but it is a billion degrees. But anyway, if you want to go check out a couple more videos now, there is my most recent episode of Subscriber Designs in which we have some giant starships. There's also my most recent episode of Prison Architect. There's also links to my Twitter, Twitch, and Patreon in the description if you're interested. But as always, I hope you've enjoyed this. This has been Caspi with Tape. I will see you next time.